Hello, my name's James Horn. I'm just here to talk to you today a little bit about soil carbon. And I've just dug this plug of soil out randomly just to show you where most of the carbon is in a soil, which is in that surface soil layer. In here, it's about the top 15 centimetres, which is quite thick for a South Australian soil. Often the concentration of soil carbon and organic matter is in that top 10 centimetres or less. And here you see a lighter coloured layer, which has a, a lot less carbon. The carbon comes from the atmosphere originally and the plants absorbing that carbon and then the roots proliferating through the soil and the carbon builds up in the soil. Now there's three main factors that determine how much carbon you can grow in a soil or build up in a soil and that's climate which is rainfall mostly, it's soil type which is mostly to do with the amount of clay in that soil and also the land use and for example permanent pasture land will tend to build up a lot of soil carbon compared to annual cropping. Just thinking about the soil carbon in the limestone coast, there's a whole range of soils in the limestone coast, from deep sands to cracking clays. The clay soils have the potential to build up a lot more carbon than the sandy soils, but because of the high rainfall of this area, the potential to build up carbon is quite high. But that being said, the levels in the surface soil in a lot of areas will probably be at optimal levels already, but there's a quite a lot of potential to build up soil carbon below that level, and particularly by growing more perennial plants with deeper roots that are putting the carbon deeper down into the soil. And the first thing I'd do to look at my soil carbon levels, where well, you can actually see it, the darker a soil is, the more carbon there is, the thicker that dark layer is, the more carbon there is. But the standard testing is from 0 to 10 centimetres, a laboratory testing for soil organic carbon. But if you're interested in the emissions reduction fund and that sort of measurement of soil carbon, they go down to about 30 centimetres. But I'd look at the levels that I have to start with. And in a high rainfall area like this, that's had good fertility and good plant growth over a lot of years, the carbon level is probably at optimal levels, but there's opportunities to build it up below the top 10 centimetres. If you want to do a quick assessment of soil carbon in the paddock, you're looking at how thick this surface soil organic enriched layer is, the darker layer, and then how dark it is. And you can also do a soil texture or just manipulate the soil in your hand. And the spongier it feels or the more slippery it feels, the higher will be the carbon levels. But to, to know exactly what you've got, it's best to do a laboratory test. So in, in a productive agricultural system, the main part about soil carbon is the turnover of soil carbon. So you might not be building up the carbon necessarily, you might have your carbon at optimal levels already, at least in the surface soil, but it's that turnover of organic matter, so the input of carbon by the plants, and then the uh, feeding on that by the microorganisms that release the carbon back into the atmosphere. And so while you might want to build soil carbon levels at the same time, it's that turnover that's most important for a productive system.